Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 women. I'm really excited for today because one of my favorite people is here. Say hello to Garrett. Garrett is the founder and CEO of Birch Boys Chaga, Birch Boys. I love this company and I'm such a fan of Garrett's and the quality of his products and just the whole deal. Birch Boys is actually the boss event for this month. And because the offerings from Birch Boys have expanded to different mushrooms, I thought, Garrett, let's come on and you can talk a little bit about the mushrooms. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I've got my set over here, but I ended up picking things out of it. So it's not a complete set anymore. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a little bit about Garrett's process. In other words, what kind of quality we're looking at here with this company. And then we're going to talk about the individual mushrooms. And I'm going to pipe in every now and then when I have personal experience. This all started for me when I started hearing about Chaga during the kerfluffle <laughs> that we had. You remember the kerfluffle fallout happening now. Anyway, Chaga is really immune system modulator and it's great for preventing infection and just really managing your immune system. And so I heard about Chaga. I didn't know where to get it. So I started surfing around online looking for a really good quality resource for Chaga, found Birch Boys, did a video on it, had no idea who Garrett was, didn't have, you know, I wasn't related to the company at all. And he hunted me down. He said, what did you do? <laughs> because apparently there's a way to find out when people are talking about you. I don't know. He's smarter than I am on that. So I started with my Chaga. Now I use my Chaga in a product called Chaga Now. If you are wanting to really work with your immune system and get it really fine-tuned, the this product is really where you want to start. So this is how I got introduced to Garrett and Birch Boys. And now I'm using a lot of products from their line. And so are you guys because it's just a really good quality company. So welcome in, Garrett. It's so nice to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah, after all that talking, I probably it felt like an avalanche there. What I want to do today, and thank you everyone who's in the chat, and I want to let you know Garrett's going to do most of the talking. I'm going to be monitoring the chat. If you have specific questions, put them over there, and I'll ask Garrett the question so that you can get an answer right here, right now. What I want to talk about first, Garrett, is just give us a brief description of your company. I know a lot of my viewers know who you are and how the company started, and then also kind of move into your manufacturing process. That's the concern for me is when I'm buying products like this, I want to make sure that the quality is there. So take it away, Garrett, and tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, of course, I learned about Chaga from my grandmother. That was sort of my introduction to all of this. Um, Chaga is a bark-eating fungus basically that grows on birch trees. And so um, actually all of the mushrooms that we sell and all the mushrooms that we're going to talk about are bark eating or tree destroying mushrooms that grow wild here in the Adirondacks. Um, we're kind of unique in that all of the mushrooms besides the lion's mane and the maitake um, and even some of the lion's mane and maitake are harvested wild here in the Adirondacks. So we lease 200,000 acres of privately owned timberland it's basically vast wilderness, um, and that's where the actual mushrooms come from. Those that don't come from that land, the lion's mane and the maitake, we purchase from an organic cultivator, and we do supplement that with wild lion's mane and maitake. There's just not as much of an abundance of those mushrooms as there are some of the others. So um, that's kind of where it started. You know, I, I, I love nature, and to me, the, the nature is what makes the mushrooms so valuable. These, these mushrooms basically suck the life force uh, or draw the life force out of these ancient old growth trees. So, um, you know, there's there's some companies that grow mushrooms in uh, indoor settings, in like a, in a cultivated setting that is a um, little bit less quality. Like even our lion's mane and our maitake, it's wild simulated. So it's grown on actual hardwood logs outdoors. Uh, I think that makes a big difference because otherwise a lot of companies will just basically take a substrate, which may be like sawdust, and put it in a bag and grow it like that. And sometimes that sawdust has been treated with like chemicals. Um, and then sometimes they're actually taking the mycelium or the fungus of the organism and throwing that in with the mushroom. So there's this debate between fruiting bodies versus mycelium. Some companies are cutting the product basically with mycelium, which is like, you can't even harvest mycelium in nature. 
So, um, uh, so that's a common question we get. But the tinctures, basically these, these come in the order that I learned about the mushrooms. So we have chaga, reishi, lion's mane, turkey tail, maitake, and artist conch. Um, I want to give you guys like a rundown of the tincture process, um, and then we can uh, talk about the mushrooms, I suppose. Yeah, that would, yeah, and you guys can see why I had Garrett on. I mean, he knows so much, so much about this. Why don't you talk a little bit about your particular process and how that works? Yeah. So, um, and by the way, we do have a link on our website that um, if you click learn and then mushroom tincture formulation, it will cover this in depth and great detail uh, because some people don't really disclose the process behind how they make their tinctures um, or any extract or any product for that matter. And I think it's extremely important because not, not all tinctures are made equal. Um, not all extracts are made equal and not all mushrooms are made equal, but um, we use basically 12,500 milligrams of the mushroom uh, per, per unit, right? So this artist conch tincture came from 12,500 milligrams of artist conch mushroom. And uh, basically that's as much mushroom, that's as much ground mushroom material that you're able to actually fit in water. Like otherwise it would, it would be dry because there wouldn't be enough water to actually keep it saturated. And so we, we do that and we brew the, the mushrooms for 72 hours at 175 degrees. And um, so there's no substitute for time. That's one thing I, I say in the tincture making process. Um, I also think that the heat is very important because if you go above, if you get too close to boiling point temperatures, then you're degrading some of the constituents basically in the mushrooms. I mean, even the vessel and the container that you brew the mushrooms in uh, can make a difference. So um, we brew it in just stainless steel containers for 72 hours at 175 degrees Fahrenheit for three days. Um, then after that, we take those same mushrooms that have then brewed in water or have already brewed in water. Um, and we use distilled water, by the way. Uh, we take those mushrooms and then we actually soak them in organic cane alcohol. So um, we actually have an organic cane alcohol batch always going in advance. So like by the time a hot water extract batch becomes ready, we actually have the alcohol batch ready from the prior batch to mix together. And we mix together the hot water extract with the alcohol extract that has been soaking for six weeks at a ratio of 3.5 parts hot water to one part of the alcohol extract. So we do it all here by hand. Um, there's a lot of pressure as you grow to outsource your manufacturing process. And uh, I, I just am never going to do that because there's so many ways that the quality can, uh, there's so many ways that you can lose quality throughout the process. There's so many ways that can go wrong. And, um, you know, I find that the potency of our tinctures is uh, just much, much more potent than that of our competitors, to be honest. And I want to jump in here for a minute and talk to you gals. This is why I am such a big fan of smaller companies that are driven by integrity. Because when you get to the corporate level or when it starts being so big that the main focus is profit instead of the passion of the owner and the integrity of the owner and it the the quality of the product being so important that's why i love these small companies i'm getting goosebumps talking about this because we, we deserve that we deserve a good quality product done by people who really care not this other thing that's kind of grown up around us so that's one of the reasons i love garrett so much because this was an organic company for him he started when he was like 14 with his grandmother harvesting chaga sold it at the local farmer's market and the company built from there because he's passionate about it. And that's why I'm such a big fan of this company because I know when I get one of their products, I'm getting something that Garrett's really, really proud of because it's important to him. So that's my little, <laughs> that's my two cents. Do you want to talk about, let's, let's back up a little bit and talk about what the boss event sale is for this month. Just if you guys are new and you didn't see the boss event video, First of all, with this tincture bundle, and I'm sorry, mine's not complete anymore because I've been picking out of it already. This tincture bundle, if you haven't tried any of the tinctures, is available for 50% off this month, only to pretty over 50 viewers. So that's a good place to start if you're not familiar or haven't used them or you just want to have a nice little grouping of tinctures 
to own. And then my favorites, and I have a couple here, my favorites for this month. And when you click on the link below in the description box, it'll take you to a dedicated page. My favorites this month are 50% off. And so I'm going to be ordering <laughs> a lot of my favorites. So just so you know, that's what the special is today. What I'd like to do now, Garrett, and thank you for kind of talking to us about the process, is you're, I'd like to go through each of the, the tinctures and talk about what we might see as benefits. Now, clearly, neither Garrett or I are doctors, and this is not medical advice. This is a supplement. I take lion's mane. This is my ride or die right now, the chaga and the lion's mane. If you have any kind of fuzzy thinking, or if you just don't feel like you have the clarity or your brain is just not snapping like it used to, you might want to give this a whirl. I'm telling you what, I saw such a difference when I started taking lion's mane in the clarity and the quickness of my thinking. I'm just so much more spot on when I have my lion's mane. So this is a ride or die for me. Of course, the chaga now is really easy to put in your pot of coffee in the morning for immune system modulation. And Garrett will tell you what immune system modulation is. It's That's important to know. And then I have to say, remember when I did the boss event video and I said, I'm going to start, you know, one at a time working through these different tinctures and tell you what I'm, I'm feeling. Well, the first one I tried is Rishi because Garrett had mentioned that it does help some people to sleep. I'm telling you what, I am out like a friggin' light when I take this stuff. It is so good. And it give, it gives me that kind of yummy, dreamy sleep. You know, as you get older, you, I just don't, I just don't get that kind of thing that you get when you're younger, but oh my gosh, this stuff, if you have any trouble sleeping, or if you just want to improve your sleep, you might want to think about this one because this is the ticket. Okay, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say it's funny that reishi is the mushroom that you chose to to kind of take on this month because that was like your decision right i didn't influence that and um reishi grows only every other summer and it only grows on hemlock trees but so like in my eight years of experience harvesting reishi it grows on even years like 2022 2024 and so it grows basically it starts in may um and then it, it by Ju june july we're gonna see like big clusters of beautiful reishi mushrooms growing on hemlock trees, any fallen or dead hemlocks um, in the Northeast. So we're kind of like right before reishi harvesting season and it's fast and furious because we have literally like, uh, just to talk process for a minute, we have like two weeks where the reishi mushroom is actually still good and harvestable before it goes bad. And we have to harvest two years worth of reishi mushroom. Wow. Uh, so it's quite an operation. We have like refrigerators dedicated for reishi. Um, we require that the harvesters we work with slice the reishi so that we can dry it all on time. Uh, but it's really quite crazy every time reishi season rolls around and we're almost there. Uh, but So do you have people, members of the community that come out and help you harvest? Yeah. Yeah. We work with like um, a handful of people who most of them typically work on the land that we lease. So like, and, and I'll just mention that is the basis of our organic certification. So like what, what the basis, what makes a product organic basically means it comes from a land parcel where you have a landowner affidavit where there's no pesticide use and there hasn't been in the past five years. So uh, we, the land we lease, they don't use pesticides, but there are certain like timber activities, timber harvesting activities on the land. Um, and there's foresters that walk the land and we work with these people to help source the mushrooms. So um, really they bring it to us. Um, and we do go out and do our own harvesting as well. Yeah. So back to the reishi, the benefits of reishi. If someone was to say, do you tell me about this and what might I see? What would you say? To them? I would say that like there's definitely a tangible, um, not like a sedative effect, but more of like a, a relaxing and calming and anti-anxiety anti effect from the reishi. Um, there's been studies that actually show it can increase oxygen absorption in the bloodstream by up to like 30 percent um so like quite literally you know you're absorbing more oxygen in the blood and i th i think of it myself like i often have to tell myself to breathe when i'm stressed out um and i think that the reishi just kind of helps you um breathe more deeply um absorb more oxygen it's also really anti-inflammatory um so and there is a distinction to be made 
Uh, there's like the Chinese Rishi, Ganoderma lucidum, which is more traditionally known. This is Hemlock Rishi or Ganoderma suge that we have here in uh, the United States in North America. And this is the one that really has more of a calming and relaxing effect. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. Okay, so um, you, let's talk about lion's mane. I did it a little bit, but why don't you kind of talk about what you would say to someone if they were just asking you about this. And ladies, I want to tell you, if you're into lion's mane, this is what I buy because this will last me four months. So I can get three bottles of this and I've got a year's supply. So this is a good deal to buy the bigger one. What's that? <laughs> we just came out with these little measuring cups for the 16 ounce tinctures as well, because people were having trouble, trouble because it didn't have the dropper. Uh, mm -hmm. But now you'll see actually on the product page, you can get a measuring cup to help you do your daily serving. It has oh. like the measurements on it. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what would you say about lion's mane just to someone you met at a party? It's really great for your brain, focus, memory, uh, cognitive function, also like mood and anxiety, uh, depression and anxiety that's been studied. There's a lot of studies on lion's mane. Uh, there's very little uh, negative side effects. I haven't heard of any contraindications when it comes to lion's mane. And I definitely will say anecdotally, it is the one mushroom that like people actually feel. So I, I mean, I can drink a cup of coffee and fall asleep. I don't have a very sensitive, um, I'm not sensitive to those things, but the lion's mane is something that even if you don't feel it when you're taking it, you'll feel it when you stop taking it. And I, we really, if you look at the comments on our product page, it's pretty tangible. And that's, that's one thing that I like about lion's mane is I actually do feel like I feel it. I notice it when I stop taking it. Um, these are things that you want to take pretty much every day. Um, and, you know, a weekend, a few days in is when you'll start to actually feel a benefit. Um, yeah, you know, for me, I started feeling the lion's mane just within a few days. And what I did, ladies, and I've shared this before, when I started taking it, I told Garrett, don't tell me anything about it. And I didn't research it at all. I just heard a lot about it because I didn't want to be influenced about how my response was. And when I got back to Garrett, after I'd been taking it for a while, I said, my clear, my thinking is so clear. And he goes, bingo, that's it. <laughs> so it, it really does do that. Okay. So um, now why would a person buy a, the ch go for the chaga tincture as opposed to the chaga now? Is it just right. preference on how you want to take it? Um, part of it is a personal preference, um, that's for sure. But I do think there's a distinction. Like the chaga tincture is going to have the alcohol extract in it as well. Like the chaga now is just a hot water extract. We're just evaporating chaga tea. It's instant chaga tea. Um, ch chaga tincture is you have the alcohol extraction as well. And that is going to come with a different variety of compounds that aren't going to be present in the, the chaga now. So like um, it's more of like a full spectrum extract. Some of those compounds that aren't water soluble that do come out in the tincture would be like the triterpenes in chaga, the betulin, the betulinic acid, the inotodiol. Those are really some of the more complex and really powerful medicinal compounds in chaga. But if you're just looking for like daily immune support, then chaga now is perfect for that. Uh, it's going to have all the antioxidants um, and, and really it packs a more potent dose of the hot water extract than a tincture would because the tincture you're just taking four milliliters. If you're drinking chaga tea, you're getting, you know, a really potent serving of the immune supporting benefits of the chaga. Uh, but if you were looking to do uh, something more aggressive and you were like actually had a terminal illness and you were using chaga as part of a homeopathic routine uh, with guidance from a physician, of course, then maybe you'd look at the tinctures. Okay. I know Cliff High used chaga for when he was going through his cancer things. Garrett and I are Cliff High fans. If you don't know who Cliff High is, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a couple of questions. Um, it says, uh, well, Tamara says lion may, lion's mane, she's heard that it's supposed to help prevent Alzheimer's. I can understand that because by golly, you're, my thinking is so much more clear. Um, then Colleen, of course, again, not medical advice, but she did say for my son, 35 years old with ADD, how should he take? So based on maybe comments or um, from your customers, do you have anything you can say about that? 
Yeah, actually, I can be honestly. So I'm, I was prescribed with ADHD. Um, I know that's different than ADD, but I was prescribed Adderall. So, I mean, I've, I've been on that and um, I've talked to a lot of people who have had ADD or ADHD or are otherwise on some sort of stimulant. And um, basically uh, it does make a difference. Like Chaga, def or I'm sorry, Lion's Man can definitely help um, with your focus, folk with your, I, I almost found that for me, Adderall like exasperated the problem, you know, like I didn't feel like I was actually, I was just more squirrel brained than I was without it. Um, whereas the lion's mane is more of a subtle, it's like definitely way more subtle, but it definitely actually helps you focus. And it, it also kind of gives you energy. I have heard people uh, also say that it works just as effective as Adderall. I don't personally believe that. Like I, I, I definitely feel they're very different. Uh, but it is something people say. Yeah. Now, someone said, can you add lion's mane to something because of the taste? And I understand that when I first took lion's mane, I thought, oh, man, you know, it's a, it has a specific taste. I'm so used to it now. <laughs> it's like it's no it's no big deal. I'll just take my little shot of lion's mane and sip my coffee and I'm absolutely fine. But if you put this in something, it's not going to impact the results. Is that correct? It, well, you know, it's it's always hard because that's such a there's a lot of chemistry there and it depends on so many factors. But like I would avoid just a very acidic juice or something very acidic. Like if you start changing the pH a little bit too much, things can actually precipitate. Um, but but normally like juice, juice is OK, but water, I would say, is best. Like if you want to mask the flavor of the tincture, the best way to do it is just to put it in an eight ounce glass of water and drink the water because, um, you know, there's it does mask the flavor pretty well at that point, you know. OK, I'm so used to it. It's it's almost kind of like I sort of like it now. And yeah. maybe it's because I like it because I know what it's going to do for me. You know, it might be that kind of emotional attachment thing. So <laughs> just a little caveat. OK, let's talk about turkey tail, because turkey tail is what I'm going to try next after I'm done with my month of Rishi. And I'll tell you what, this is I'm, I'm going to get a big bottle of that one. too. <laughs> So what's about, tell us about the turkey tail. So turkey tail is um, a really pro prolific mushroom uh, because there's, there's actually a, a Japanese medication made from turkey tail called polysaccharide crestin, PSK. Um, and that's been studied for cancer, essentially. Now we don't know how much polysaccharide PSK or PSP the, these actives are in our turkey tail tincture. So I'm not trying to make any claims with regard to that, but like, that's one of the reasons turkey tail is so popular and well known. It also has great benefits for supporting your immune system in general. Um, it's great for your gut and your healthy gut microbiome and digestion. Um, but we also, one interesting thing about the turkey tail. So we, we, we've sent all of these tinctures to the lab to test for various categories of uh, good stuff in the mushrooms. One of those is beta glucans. One of those is polysaccharides. Um, and so, out of the turkey tail tincture extract that we made, we, we basically consolidated it down to an extract powder, which just means we evaporated all the liquid away from a turkey tail tincture. And we sent it to the lab and over 60% of the turkey tail by weight uh, were polysaccharides, which we know have great immune supporting benefits, but that like crushed all of the other mushrooms in terms of the polysaccharide content. Um, so it was just really interesting to me to see that um, and we know that polysaccharide crestin, polysaccharide peptide, those have, you know, a lot of studies and research for their anti-cancer benefits. Uh, but also anecdotally, I've heard that turkey tail really helps people who have chronic pain. Uh, so like I know a woman that works and she stocks this gift shop and she goes into the basement stock room and goes up and down the stairs all day and she really feels it in her knees. And, and this is like the second person I've said uh, or I've heard say this about their knees with turkey tail that after they take the tincture, the pain stops. So it must be anti-inflammatory as well. Yeah. A real lubricant for your knees. Um, there is a question from Sherry Robert. She says, does the fungi five have the same results rather than taking each tincture separately? Good question. Um, you would have to take four, I'm sorry. Um, you'd have to take five times as much of the fungi five to take the same amount of the full serving of each mushroom separately. And so the fungi five, just that being said, 
you know, you can kind of up your serving on the fungi five, but I would wait until you try each of the mushrooms because basically then you don't really know what you're reacting to. So sometimes people do have like a little bit of a stomach upset from a certain mushroom and it may be particular to that mushroom. It also may be just something you experience your first time doing any mushroom tincture because a lot of these compounds in the mushrooms are just new to your body unless you eat a lot of mushrooms. Um, but, but sometimes, you know, you can really pin down, okay, you know, I, chaga really helps me with this, or, you know, I don't really react well with Rishi or whatever. And uh, the only way to really figure that out is to take all of them consciously separately first, and then, um, and then do the fungi five in larger servings. If, if uh, you feel that that works for you, or if you're the type of person that just knows that they're not going to put in the work to do all of that, you know, that's what the fungi five is for. If you just want to get benefits um, and, and just do your, the four fill, four milliliters, which is the same serving size as the other tinctures, but know that you're getting one fifth of each mushroom as you would from getting that one mushroom individually. Yeah. Great. Very helpful. There is a question from Nancy and again, not medical advice, but she's asking about, um, MS. Yeah. My mom has MS actually. Uh, well, it's kind of a confusing situation because she went to, she got, she had two lesions on her brain. She got diagnosed with MS. She went back and then there were five lesions on her brain after she had started this MS medication. And so, um, she was kind of like in a panic at one point she was, she was doing shots, you know, for her medication. I don't know what it, what it was. I want to say a Baggio or something. Um, anyway, she went to the Mayo clinic and they ended up disagreeing with the diagnosis again. So she's been through the ringer where like she, she has a neurologist telling her she has MS. She doesn't really know if she has MS, but um, she stopped taking the MS medication. She does the lion's mane every day. And she goes now annually for a scan and her five lesions that were there, you know, the, the five, the three that appeared in addition to the original two, um, none of them have gotten worse. And, you know, so, but I know that like lion's mane actually has been studied on this topic. My mom learned about lion's mane when she went to the Mayo Clinic for MS. Um, it was, they give her a little lion's mane pamphlet in her goodie bag. Um, and then um, there's a lot of studies that actually talk about the regeneration of the myelin sheath uh, due to the aranacins and the um, heresiones in lion's mane. So there are studies on that subject. Yeah, that's that's good information. Thank you, Garrett. Okay, so um, let's talk about the artist conch. Mm -hmm. That's the one I've been taking a lot lately. This is also probably one that you're, many people aren't aware of. Have you ever heard of this mushroom? Not until I met you. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you're from the Northeast, I would say this is the mushroom that people draw on. And I don't know if you've ever seen like a, a conch mushroom that people draw on the underside of because it stains when you uh, touch it and it will dry that way. So actually Mohawk artists, um, indigenous artists have been drawing on this mushroom and you can find them at different like uh, art festivals and things. You'll find these beautiful uh, wood light or wildlife scenes drawn on these mushrooms, but it's the same genus as Rishi. So this is Ganoderma aplanatum. Rishi is Ganoderma suge or Ganoderma lucidum, depending which hemisphere of the world you're in. Uh, and actually it was our opinion that this was like a superior form of Rishi. Um, so we, we've done a lot of research on this mushroom. We've actually sent it and compared it with Rishi to test for the ganoderic acids in artist conch and Rishi. And uh, we found that uh, artist conch trumps Rishi for the ganoderic acid content and the ganoderic acids um, are basically the, the anti-cancer con constituents in the Ling Chi, which is the Chinese Rishi, you know, so we have three species of Rishi, really. There's the true Chinese Rishi. There's the, the hemlock Rishi that's here in the United States. And then there's artist conch, which is just another Ganoderma mushroom. There's actually 86 different varieties of Ganoderma mushrooms. And in India, they have a whole science called ganotherapy, which is basically medicinal. It's a medicinal science based on the genus of Ganoderma mushrooms. So all these mushrooms have benefits, but specifically with the artist conch, uh, the unique benefits would be um, that it can help with pain management pretty, pretty seriously. It can help with libido. Uh, there's actually a lot of studies on mice and rats that get, um, get a little bit more 
vulgar than I'd like to get into. <laughs> they the want to make more mice. They want to make more mice when they take this up. They, they measure yeah. mounts, um, humping attempts. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Like you should, <laughs> the studies on our, in our blog, um, it's quite, uh, it's, it's vulgar actually, but, um, they also, or the artist con can also help with, um, keeper protective qualities. So it, it can help with, um, keeping a healthy liver and keeping a healthy kidney. Um, I noticed that my, um, Billy Rubin was high the last time I had a blood test and that's why I started taking this and it's gone down since then. So. Interesting. Gosh, it, it seems like you can solve just about anything with mushrooms. Okay. The last one is, and I'm so glad you said that Matake. Maitake, yeah. Maitake. I, I, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so. it. Nobody knows how to pronounce mushrooms. You know, you give it your best shot. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, even a, hope for the best. If you were to go to like a fungi festival, you have even the nerds all pronounce it differently, you know. Um, fungi or fungi, it's like split 50-50. But uh, the maitake is also known as hen of the woods. It grows at the base of oak trees. Um, and basically, uh, they, they also sometimes call this the dancing mushroom because when they used to find it in Europe, like serfs would find this mushroom and they apparently dance for joy because they were so excited. But it's a, it's a very nutritious mushroom, so you can't actually eat this mushroom. Uh, but it um, helps with the metabolism. It also, also can help with blood sugar and blood pressure levels. Oh. Um, and then also there's like some people, it doesn't happen for everyone, but like every now and then, and you'll see it if you look in our comments, some people will take my talkie every day and like within two months they'll lose like 10 pounds. But it's like, it's what? like, yeah, I swear to God, it's not something that happens to everyone. But if it, if it does happen, it's like a very fast period of time where there's some sort of metabolism shift or correction. I think a lot of it is because there's so many nutritious elements of my talkie. It's like a good culinary mushroom, but there's something going on there that can make certain people lose a lot of weight very quickly. That's really interesting. It must be people that have a pretty um, less than operating metabolism. <laughs> right. Or maybe it's been compromised by something else. You know, yeah. I know one person that this happened to had, had Lyme, you know? Mm, yeah. And when there's so many toxins in our environment right now. It's like we're, we have all got something. Okay. There's one question that says, what one was for the liver? Do you know of any yeah. liver benefits from any of these different? Definitely artist conch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one right here. And why? It's just, so, I mean, I don't necessarily know why off the top of my head, but I know that like that those are some of the studies that artist conch is really, it's one of the unique things we, I haven't really seen that among any of the other mushrooms besides artist conch. And there's not as much literature on artist conch, but what does exist is like really quite powerful. I would imagine it's because of the ganoderic acids because they do some really incredible things. And we did get really good ganoderic acid contents on our, on our own studies. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This has been so helpful. Thank you. Here's a question for you. If someone wanted to take all these tinctures, can you do that daily or is it just too much? Yeah, it's definitely safe to take all of the tinctures at once. Again, I would recommend like easing your way into it if you haven't ever done this before, just because the mushrooms are going to have unique compounds that your body has never encountered. So um, there can be a little bit of a gastrointestinal upset if you overdo it. Normally that will go away pretty quickly once your body, you know, gets used to these in your diet. Um, and uh, yeah, you, it's totally safe to take them all at once. Yeah. Wonderful. I don't know that you'd want to, you know, you might want to think about what issues do you want to address? I can tell well, if the Rishi and did you say, what was the other one that was the artist conch? Yep. Okay. So these are very similar. So I'm curious. So what I'll do is I'll take the Rishi for a month and then I'll take the artist conch for a month and kind of compare them and I'll let you guys know. But I'll tell you, if you're having trouble sleeping, phew, this stuff is <laughs> the bomb. So thank you, Garrett, so much. I just, you know, I think when I think about Garrett, I think he's the son I never had, except he's too young to be my son. He's too old to be my grandson. So I don't know. I just am so tickled that I met you. And thank you for being a company with integrity. That thank really you. means a lot to me. Thank you guys for supporting. And thank you for this opportunity, Kimberly. Yeah, it, it, it's so helpful. 
Now the boss event is goes the entire month. If you're on the newsletter list, you've got a direct link there, or there's a direct link in the description box down below. If you want to try anything again, my favorites are definitely the lion's mane for clarity of thinking. I, I take the chaga just for immune support because you know, there's a lot of creepy crawlies out there and I want to keep my immune system really, really in that tip top shape. And then I am using the Rishi. Can't tell you, I, it's the dreamiest sleep. It's really lovely. So I'm really, really happy with everything. Now, if you don't want to put the chaga now in your coffee, you can make chaga tea with the chaga chunks. This is how I got started. I used to make a big crock pot of chaga tea and that tea was what I would use to make my coffee with. So it was kind of like a double. It was a chaga coffee and a, and regular coffee together. So that's how I got started. So if you haven't tried Birch Boys and you're looking to improve your health, I can tell you everything that I've tried so far has really been wonderful. And I have such trust in Garrett and his integrity about the company. So I think we're, um, what is the website? It's just birchboys.com. It's listed in the description box down below. Can I still take my vitamins, Nancy? Absolutely. I take all my vitamins. I take all my lion's mane. I, I really do invest in my health because I'm getting closer to 70 than I'd like to admit. So um, staying healthy and active and pain-free and flexible is so important to me because I don't want to get old and creaky. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal in life. Garrett, thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to say before we leave today? Oh, just that um, we were planning at some point this year on releasing a mushroom coffee. So I'll talk to you more about that another time. But I know people have been asking about that. That would be wonderful. So I get to test it first. The yes. First <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. If there's any additional questions, put it in the comment section below the video and Garrett will kind of monitor the comments and, and pop in and answer hopefully within a day or two. So let us know if you have any additional questions and the sale goes through the end of the month. And Garrett, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy life to spend some few minutes with us telling us all about mushrooms. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us. Make it a great day. See you in the next video. Bye now. Bye.